My name is Joseph Wood. Born, we believe, in Chicago, Illinois, and uh, the year was about 1965, March March 20th is the date that we think it is. Um, we don't know. We were found. I was a, I'm what you call a foundling. I was found in the streets in Chicago uh, on on March 20th. We just found that out seven years ago, and um, they changed the laws in Illinois to say that if you were ever adopted, you can have your original birth certificate. And uh, man, I'm thinking if I get my original birth certificate, I'll be able to identify who my parents are and let them know I'm okay. Hey, thanks, you had me. Uh, well, they finally sent the birth certificate and said, this is your foundling birth certificate. Well, what's a foundling? A foundling is someone who's been abandoned, uh, a kid that's been found. And uh, that shocked me. I went into looking for the people who found me and I found them. Uh, and he shares a story. Again, he's going to work one day and found this boy in a box outside in his apartment um, apartment complex, eight degrees snow and ice. And uh, police came a few hours later and took me to an orphanage. And I was adopted at 10 years old. And um, so that was the beginning. So the day I celebrated my birthday is just the day I was found. There's no record of knowing how much older. They thinking a week to maybe two weeks old, but no, no one knows. Uh, tell us more about that story. It's a unique story and you, you come from this hard, beginning to a very successful uh, position now. I mean, kind of... Yes, it was, it was, I mean, so uh, the folks who came in, uh, came to uh, to the orphanage, uh, Loretta and Sylvester, they were married for about five years, really wanted kids in the worst kind of way and couldn't have any. Uh, and so she convinced my, my dad to go to the orphanage and let's, let's foster care of the little girl and get there. And she says, no, I don't want a girl, I want this little boy right here. So they start foster caring me. And sure enough, she gets pregnant, has my brother, a year later has my sister, a year after that has my brother. So she ended up been having, having uh, three kids right after that. But growing up was a, just a, a challenge trying to figure out, well, why was I giving up for adoption? There was no records. I didn't know that I was left in the streets. They didn't know because it was a closed adoption. Uh, so I always questioned what happened. Uh, was something that I did? Uh, were they in an interracial relation that wasn't uh, acceptable back in the 60s? Uh, um, you know, was she too old, too young? I, again, just thought of many of those different scenarios and I eventually got to a place where I said, I guess it didn't matter if she had me. I guess it didn't matter if she had me. Uh, well, seven years ago when I found out the rest of the story and I ended up finding the guy who found me and he tells, uh, well, she must have more than had you. She must have loved you because she put you in a place where you could be found. Um, so it's been an a interesting journey, to say the least, to go from the steps of the guy's name is Caesar Johnson, a Korean veteran uh, who, who saved me, to the steps of the courthouse as a deputy secretary, and now, uh, I mean, depths of the, the Capitol, and now the steps of the courthouse. has been a journey that I can architect. That's just, again, God's providence and um, you know, uh, his, his hand being on there. Um, a lot of hard work, a lot of crying, a lot of trials, a lot of tribulations, but a lot of joy that comes along because there's a lot of people who's in your in these journeys to help you kind of map and path and move through this process. Uh, you know, some people kind of feel like maybe uh, God or someone's looking out for them. I mean, do you ever get oh, that feeling in your life? Oh, absolutely. No doubt about it. I, from the very beginning. Uh, and, and for those who don't know, I believe I, he had his hands on me. Uh, he, I, and, and my mom who left me there in the box with a blanket, uh, she could have put me in a plastic bag and left me in the alley and you and I wouldn't be talking right now. I would have froze out there with that kind of temperature and all. So I, I do think that he has architect and he does have those plans for all of us. So uh, absolutely, I do believe that. Thanks, Judge. Uh, talk about how you got from Chicago, the path that took you from Chicago, to Arkansas. Wow. Uh, I used to read, I was a recruiter for the University of Chicago. I was a director of their MBA recruiting and traveling around uh, the world recruiting MBA students, people getting their master's in business to come to Chicago and get their, their business degree, their master's in business. One of the top business schools in the world and uh, we were having this big conference and Walmart was at this conference. They were recruiting IT people. They were, I'm like, Walmart? in Chicago recruiting MBA students. I used to work for Walmart when I was in college in Iowa uh, and uh, all through my years in college, helped pay for college. And uh, I asked them, what are they doing here? Hey, we're re preparing for Y2K. This is 1996, 97. Uh, we're recruiting and hiring IT people to come and help us get ready for the year 2000 with all the systems that we have, some of the largest 
uh, systems that IBM has ever built was for the Pentagon, the next largest was for Walmart. And so we need to be ready when the 2000 clock hits, all our systems are up and running, we can still manage. And so we're recruiting the guy. I said, wow, Walmart. They said, hey, you're doing HR recruiting. We'd love to have you come down and do some of our exec recruiting. I said, yeah, but I'm not interested in, in, in Arkansas. It's not what you think, as they told me. And uh, all that being said, they recruited, recruited hard. And I ended, I kind of ended up coming down to help them uh, recruit and bring people to the Northwest Arkansas region. And uh, that was, that was a, another incredible journey and to do that for them. So how did how did you get from Walmart to Little Rock? Sure. So my whole, pretty much in high school, mom, dad, they went through a divorce. You got to do something to help keep your brothers and sisters from getting caught up in the drugs and gangs of Chicago. We grew up in the in the, in the ghettos of Chicago in the hood, and and so it was tough on on a single mom, four kids. I started doing things such as starting a teen club and a teen group to help. Uh, uh, get the kids off the street. My church gave me access to uh, that church, the fellowship hall, and it grew. And the community was like, this guy here, we really want to make sure he stays uh, in contact with us as a community liaison, help us as we have issues with the young people in the community. Well, my mother always said, you need to continue to stay involved in the community where you live, because that's where you live. Well, I never stopped doing that. And so uh, when I moved down to Arkansas, after working with Walmart, after hours, I would go and do some work with the, uh, the, the community groups, uh, whether it be uh, the Eminem and Augustine Foundation or uh, working with the kids at the various uh, uh, boys and girls. Or, and so I always was involved with it. And next thing you know, this, I was looking at running uh, for office and I was traveling to Walmart internationally and I was always gone. So I was like, man, how can I do that if I, I was traveling internationally? So I left Walmart to pursue some of my public service piece. Um, this, then at that time, secretary, well, his name was Mark Martin. He was running for secretary of state and said, if I win, I want you to be my deputy secretary of state. And so that became uh, how I got down to the cap state capitol. In 2011, we went down there, got sworn in uh, as secretary and deputy secretary of state. Um, how did you get to know Mark and what was he, what's he like? Mark Martin, I think a phenomenal, just super brilliant, super smart engineering guy. Uh, I got to know him because when I came down, I got involved in all types of, again, uh, community and, and uh, political uh, uh, work. And Mark was part of that. And he kind of connected with me. He, he got my sense of commitment and, and service. And so uh, that was his, his uh, rationale behind, hey, if we get you down, I'd be my deputy. We can help develop and move the Secretary of State's office. And so we went down there. and. They expanded some of the election night reporting processes. Now we get the returns even faster in our election results. Uh, business and corporations, we expanded that. People do a lot of that now all online. They don't have to come down to Little Rock to do that. Um, the Capitol itself, the building, the maintenance of the building, the archives, the historian, the exhibits that you see, tours of the Capitol, the structure, the infrastructure of that, that was all under the Secretary of State's office. And so we did a lot of good uh, and I think long sustaining work uh, for, at the Capitol building itself as well as the elections for people in the state of Arkansas as well as businesses in the state of Arkansas, encouraging people to do more business, extend their businesses outside of the state, outside of the country. We would travel overseas to encourage other countries to do business in Arkansas. What about the, the, the Secretary of State's website? Were you involved in any of that read? Oh, we had, I, didn't, I did not do the development, but I had my team who did. And they've done a phenomenal job really redoing that whole uh, sec the Secretary's website. That was a great work for us to do, absolutely. Ending up as county judge, I mean, hmm. that's yours is a, a different story, right? Sure. Because you had a candidate who was basically a shoe-in who pulled out at the last minute. Yes. So how did, what happened and how did you get? Hmm. So I was at you the, know what I mean? I, yeah, I was at the Secretary of State's office and uh, Mark Martin was terming, term limited out and I was looking to become the next Secretary of State. and. Uh, I started getting phone calls from the area here saying that uh, the candidate who was uh, locked in and we were thinking Mike O'Neill was going to be the next uh, county judge had moved uh, to a different county. You can't be county judge of a county that you're not in. And uh, So all wheels were on, all right, who do we get? And I suggested Mark Martin, hey, your term limit out. You need to look at this. And he said, oh, no, 
No, no, no. And so we really were trying to get our heads around who, and my wife's like, yeah, you need to come home home and this would be great. Parents got one more year of school. And I said, but I'm about to run for Secretary of State. And she's like, yes, but you need to come home. And you've been traveling for seven years, commuting back and forth. And so we went ahead and, and again, that's a hard thing because we had less than about 90 days to, to put a, a campaign together, run, and, and we did all of that. And I mean, it was a lot of obstacles in that 90 days but we were able to pull off a, a pretty huge win. Um, um, so Now, are you the, f I don't know for sure county history, I think that you're the first public office holder that's African American in Washington County, is that right? First, first in, in Arkansas, there was a first county judge in Arkansas, black county judge in Arkansas, there was one who was appointed uh, post reconstruction for, um, but the first elected, Black County Judge in Arkansas's history uh, was myself, and at the same time, um, uh, uh, Judge uh, Hank Wilkins. He was a state legislator for a number of years. He and I, he was a Democrat, I was a Republican. We both got elected on the, in November of 17 uh, and went into uh, November 16, and then we both were sworn in on January. I got sworn in at midnight, so I tell everybody I was first, and I tell him I was first as well. Because uh, I know he didn't get up until like noon the next day. So, anyway, uh, but the first Republican uh, in 40 years in the area in, in Washington County was the first Black Republican in Arkansas's history, uh, outside of being the one who was appointed. Do you ever face uh, harassment or racist comments? Oh, or oh yeah, it happens, and that's part of it. I, I yes, yes. But again, it's nothing, nothing that, that uh, has stopped me, uh, causes concern, it causes my family concern when I'm out there, whatever I'm doing. Um, and so, but, but, but again, I'm in it, I love the county, I love what I'm doing. And so it's not gonna stop me from getting around the county, taking care of the folks in the, around the county. Is it a minor, I mean, is it a common thing or is it very rare? Or uh, it's, it's I, I think it's rare when I, when I actually say it uh, and, and speak it to me, uh, but I, I have to know that it, it, there may be some subtle, some of the rationale behind some of the things that, that are done, yeah. Uh, but as far as actually saying, very rare. But it happens, absolutely. Okay, um, how have you been accepted or treated here at the courthouse, generally from the officials and the staff? Uh, oh, I, again, I think the uh, uh, First term coming in, you know, trying to figure out where everything is and, and, and run, it was met with a lot of, you're changing the way things have been. Uh, well, that's that's why people like me and, uh, and and changing it as well as trying to learn it is always a tough piece because you haven't, you haven't been here long enough to get the lay of the land, but you also know the lay of the land has, has got some, some, uh, some challenges that need to be corrected and changed. And so we had to do both of those things, both learn the process and learn what was going on in the county, as well as work to change and, and grow and make them better. And so we've done that, we've got it through the first term and, and the citizens of the county say, yes, let's do this again. And so they reelected me to come back in. And so we continue to make those modification changes, real pleased with some of the successes. Uh, and and at the same time, frustrated that we haven't got more because we've been you know, battling and working through learning and, and the, 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 hey, don't change so fast or don't move so quick or what have you. So. Uh, what about working with the quorum court? How has that been? You have a mostly Republican court. Uh, a lot of people have told me, though, that sometimes they don't necessarily, the issues aren't always party issues. That's that's correct. Well, in fact, we have less Republicans than we did when I first came in. Uh, I think when I came in, we had maybe 10 Republicans, five Democrats, and, and it didn't matter because, again, I, I had Democrats who would vote in support of something that we we're looking at and Republicans voted against and now we have almost a split nine and eight uh, so uh, I think the, the the JP's the quorum court has pretty much always looked at what is near and dear to them and, and made their decisions in both uh, accordingly uh, I cannot gather and say yes I will always have this type of thought and know that Republicans will always vote this way and Democrats that's not that's not how the court operates uh, a lot of people have also said that in the different interviews we've done is that you run, at least now, you're still running as a partisan candidate. 
Uh, but once you get in there, that changes in it. Can you explain? Have you seen that? In oh, I, 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 when I was at the secretary's office, that's exactly what we did. We, we ran and won as Republicans, but we get in. It was all about taking care of everybody in the state. Uh, for example, in the secretary's office, uh, education. We had, had an education team, and when we got in, we found out that pretty much the secretary's uh, state's office was serving schools in central Arkansas exclusively. And we're sitting here, man, but it's schools all across the state. And you got private schools, and you got charter schools, you got homeschoolers. And so we changed that, and, and it had nothing to do with party. It was about making sure that all students in all schools had access to the same website and, and information materials and uh, teachings that the secretary offered. So we did that, and that had nothing to do with party as it was making sure you take care of everyone. So running as a Republican, as a, a county judge, that's what got me in. But once I'm in, it's about taking care of all the citizens in the county. My platform was about making it better. And so it wasn't making it better for one group of people and not the others. It was just making it better. How to make sure we take care of the infrastructure, uh, the roads, the building, the bridges, uh, make sure the public safety is force first and foremost in everything that we're operating and doing. That's everybody. You can't cut out what group is this way. And so that's how I just operate always. Talk about your campaigns you ran because you ran a couple against a couple, a couple races against pretty tough candidates, sure. pretty good candidates. Sure. Uh, what was it like running? I know you did went out and campaigned a lot, and uh, yeah, uh, again, worked on a lot of campaigns, so that was not not unusual to do that. Uh, but running against some folks who have been around uh, um, uh, Mark Kenyon in the first election and then Jim House the second, both had name, name recognition, name ID, had been around uh, in, the, in the area for a while that everybody knew. Uh, and so uh, it's not that people didn't know me, but I wasn't doing the work that they were doing as far as being a legislator in the city or in the town or you know, uh, uh, the, rep, the district area that the uh, house had or in Fayetteville that uh, Kenyon had. Um, mine was all about, here's where I've touched in state, state as a um, uh, deputy secretary of state, here's what I've done in corporate, uh, but here's where I see the county and here's where I believe the county can go. And so that was the only thing I could do is get all around the county, which was the other mantra, it's all around the county, not just Fayetteville, not just Springdale, because the county is more than Springdale and Fayetteville. And so I spent a lot of time all around the county speaking to and talking to my vision for the county. And I think people kind of say, yes, I want, I, I want that, I want to see that. And anyone who's seen you campaign always ex should expect to see my wife. Your wife. Oh yeah. So oh, yeah. tell me, who's your wife and how does she help you? Oh, she is. She's one of my biggest cheerleaders and uh, uh, supporters, as well as the family. I, my girls will be out there with me as well, and uh, when they're not doing their their things. But um, my wife is, has has twenty seven years of marriage, uh, and she she sees one my heart. She knows my work ethic and my commitment to serving, and so. Uh, it's easy for her to roll up her sleeve and, and get out there and help and visit with folks as well. Um, and when I can, she'll do it in, in my seat. And, and more. In fact, a lot of people, hey, but we, we, you can't come over here if you don't have her with you. You know, they 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 have come to appreciate and respect and love her as well. So it's always good when I get out to the county or town and. And they know her and they're going and I don't even have to spend time wondering is she okay do I need to make sure she's having people talk with her and spend time and uh, so that's she's she's a great help great asset some people may or may not really understand what a county judge is because uh, of course you have circuit judges so I guess what what does the count what is the job of the county judge so the county judge is by constitution uh, Arkansas State Constitution, uh, the chief executive officer of the county. Uh, I like to describe it from a standpoint of, uh, in our country, we have the president who's the executive of the office and, as, and executes and provides oversight over the entire country. But for him not to run over every state, you have governors. And so, so governors can't run over every county, you have county judges. And so it kind of gives some of that uh, 
uh, rights of county, rights of state, uh, as well as our country, and each has their role in there. And now we work together. I spend a lot of time working with the governor, and the governor obviously spends a lot of time working with the uh, the, the uh, Congress and the federal government. But so the chief executive officer of the county is to make sure again the infrastructure. Uh, roads, building, bridges is taken care of, the public safety, so working with the sheriff, uh, making sure that your emergency services, taking care of the citizens of the county so they can continue to do the things such as economic development, build houses, raise families, etc. Um, you can't build, you can't build houses or uh, open up a business if you can't get to the town or city because there's no roads, there's no bridge, so the infrastructure is critical and that's part, probably first and foremost of all county judges, making sure the infrastructure, the public roads, buildings, and, and, and bridges are taken care of so you can navigate across those. And then obviously, real close to that is obviously the, the public safety. A lot of well, our veterans, uh, veteran services, that's also a constitutional piece that we have. Then everything else becomes almost uh, a support to uh, animal shelter. That's not a constitutional mandate, and most counties don't have that, but we have one. And so we do our very best to make sure that there's no uh, wild dogs or uh, feral cats out there that could cause harm, public safety. And so, uh, but then now we also expanded it. Now we do adoptions and that type of thing. Uh, we also have um, environmental services where we work with uh, Boston Mountain and make sure that we're doing our part to recycling and maintain the, uh, um, and be good stewards of the land and the properties that we have. Uh, let's go yes, through the big three, though. First, let's talk about roads. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, we've interviewed some of the road people, and uh, tell me what, you know, let's talk about roads. Sure. Well, uh, probably get, if we get more calls than anything, it's going to be about roads, and that's going to be mostly in your rural and your county areas. Uh, we've got probably right next to about 1,100 roads and uh, miles of roads out there. And that's an ongoing 24-hour operation, making sure that uh, the passageways are clear, when there's big rainstorms, the ditches are cleared out, uh, that we get services taken care of so buses can navigate and get to the kids, get them to school. It has rippling impact, it has a fiscal impact if you, if you don't. Your roads and bridges are not taken care of. How does farmer get his goods to the market and get it to the plate for this, the person who's here in the city who thinks that that just happens osmosisly? No, it, it, somebody has to travel travel and traverse and get that there. Uh, so we spend a lot of time, we have a huge, uh, unbelievable road crew, um, probably 85, 90 plus road guys, and, uh, and they're doing everything from, again, uh, grading roads to um, uh, cleaning, doing the ditches and doing the brush hogging to, to clear passageways so people can drive and navigate our, our uh, roads and bridges, um, replacing bridges, um, putting out signage, creating the signs, put those signs out there, and uh, man managing the equipment, the mechanics, et cetera, to go through that. So, uh, incredible team, committed team, a lot of them long-term, a lot, lot of tenure, a lot of knowledge about what, what goes into running and taking care of the roads. And most of the people who call, they know their road guys. They know, hey, I haven't seen them in a while, it's been pretty bad rain, I can't navigate. And so, uh, and that's always good when they know who their road guys are because they've been around for a while. Uh, what about buildings? When we did an interview the other day with uh, one of the maintenance guys, he said that the county has more than, or about 20? Almost 40. 40 plus buildings uh, across the, the, the county that we operate and manage. And we have, a, again, an incredible building and maintenance, building and grounds crew. And you walk in the building, you see how good it looks, and real proud of those guys because, again, whether it be cutting the grass and bushes and making sure our lights are on, uh, air conditioning and, and the whole works, that's their, their call. And uh, we have uh, uh, the buildings out there on the south campus where you may have done some interviews. We've got the courthouses, we get the three of them right here that we're man managing the old courthouse. Spend a lot of time doing preservation work, seeking grants to help keep that. And uh, as it's a working building, uh, working courthouse, but it also has a lot of upkeep and maintenance because of this age. And so, uh, that's our building and grounds crew who really keeps an eye and makes that happen. Uh, and again, a lot of them have been around for a while and so people get to know them really well. Uh, what do you see happening with the jail? I mean, it's, you know, years ago they moved it south, which has turned out to be a good deal and they made it expandable. And now you're facing, you know, 
questions on that. What do you think well, will happen? I, I think the sheriff has, has made his pitch and, and definitely with the growth and where we are, uh, the discussion about expansion is there. Uh, the JPs have been wrestling with that for a couple of years now. When do you expand? How do you expand? Uh, what are the options they've had um, uh, presenters come and talk about? ankle braces monitoring. They've had them come in and talk about what the expansion will look like. They're exploring regional uh, jails, meaning maybe partnering with some of the other counties, Madison and Bend, because they're again in the same area and region. What does a regional facility look like? What about a women's facility? So I think the JPs are really spending time trying to figure out what does it look like and, and what shape and form and when. Uh, uh, and the sheriff obviously is on the front of that again because he's the one who's dealing with the fact that we need and we need it yesterday so to speak uh, a lot of conversations going back and forth and it's been uh, now a couple of years got a bunch of new JP so uh, they're really trying to get caught up and brought up to speed uh, on where things are and, and the critical ma uh, nature of, of, of our jail uh, next year we'll start getting the getting into the census even more and we'll start seeing what those numbers look like across the this whole region uh, so I think it's going to it's going to come. Uh, something's going to end up having to happen. Every month, I think it is, you have uh, meetings with the department heads, or I, I every every month I sit down with all fifteen of my directors uh, who run pretty much all the various departments that I have in the as a county judge, and uh, from archives to roads to building and uh, building and grounds to uh, our animal shelter. Uh, environmental planning, um, juvenile detention center. So I sit down with them every month. We talk about their business, we walk through their budget, how they're tracking with their budget. Uh, and it's a good time for us. If they hadn't seen each other, we haven't talked to, we get a chance to now do some deep dive uh, with them. And we do that every month. Every month I sit down with all the mayors in the uh, county and we just get together and have coffee, talk about what's going on in their city. In fact, we did that this morning and, and uh, uh, again, just always good to kind of just get together, have some cup of, have a cup of coffee, and talk about what's going on in their towns and and where things are, what some of the pressing issues and needs that they have, and what can the county do, or vice versa, uh, what can they do to help the county in some of these regards. And then uh, every month I meet with all the elected officials, and we get together and again, have a cup of coffee, and just talk about what's going on in their particular business and how we can support and help one another. So I do that every month. So I, it's always a meeting going on for me, that's for sure. But that's always been good, I think, just to give everybody a chance to do something outside of all the, the hubbub, to slow down and, and take a breather and say, okay, here's what I got, here's how you can help, or here's how I can help you. Uh, what about regional meetings, regional planning commissions, stuff mm -hmm. like that? Are you, uh yeah, uh, so uh, I, I just in Harrison, we got the Northwest Arkansas Economic Development Commission. That's about nine or ten counties that's part of that. And so, again, that's always the economic development of this entire Northwest, North Central region. Uh, you got the regional planning who's been in. We're looking at our planning department and, and some of the way we do our zoning and, and uh, conditional use permits. And so brought them back in because they were around when they brought it into the county. And so I wanted to bring them back in. So we started looking at, we need to make some modification. We need to make some changes and let's bring you in because you have a regional purview of all this. And so we want to make sure that we bring you in as part of that discussion. Um, uh, you got, like I said, Boston Mountain kind of does some regional work with our environmental side. So yes, spent a lot of me, I, me was uh, uh, Frank Weaver over in Madison County who's it happens to be president of all the judges in the state. So we, we have 75 county judges and he happens to be the president of all the, the county judges. I uh, spent a lot of time with him as well as uh, Judge Mooring up in Bend County. In fact, I was just with him and Rogers and we were talking about SWEPCO and some of the things that they're doing with their rates and et cetera. So I spent a lot of time working with my colleagues and counterparts to talk about not just what's going on in our, our, region, our county, but what's going on in this region. Uh, Carroll County, Sam Barr was with him probably two weeks ago in his office in Carroll County. Again, what's going on and, and, and uh, what can we do to support and help? Uh, it, well, because this region, a lot of people don't think of it as counties anymore. They think of it as the Northwest. That's correct. Basically an MSA. That's right. Uh, that's exactly right. Uh, Judge Mooring and I... Uh, before the election, before we both went in in 2016, before the election, uh, I called him and said, hey, I wish you a lot of luck, a lot of success. 
uh, and vice versa, he said. But I said, when we win, I want to make sure we get together and have some conversations. So uh, November 13th, uh, November was Black Friday. It was a Black Friday. Whenever that Black Friday was, we got together at 7 in the morning having coffee. Uh, well, I guess our spouse was going out shopping. We were having coffee. But we talked about that very thing that uh, when people talk about uh, the best place to live, Bentonville, you can grow your family, or the best place to live, top five is Fayetteville, they're really not saying Fayetteville or Bentonville. They're saying this region. And so while you're the judge of Benton County, and that's great, it's not as good as Benton, Washington County, I'm just saying, uh, we, from time to time, I want us to look at doing some projects together because it will impact every, every. and one of the examples is the Crisis Stabilization Unit that we opened up uh, last month. Um, the governor had allocated dollars for three of them. We really wanted to have one here because, of, again, the population mass and growth, and we got people with some, uh, some uh, in the jail system that have mental issues that really would be better start getting some mental support. And so when I got ready to do the application work with our, our quorum court, they signed a resolution, the sheriff and uh, the drug, uh, our drug uh, court um, judge, uh, Beaumont had been working down in Little Rock. I called Benton County Judge Morgan and asked him, hey, if we can go ahead and apply, would you support this? Will you sign a letter saying that I'll go through some training, I'll get my law enforcement, I'll work with my sheriff? He said, absolutely. So he and his sheriff ended up writing a letter of support saying, if Washington County gets one, we would support it in Benton County. Called Judge Weaver, he and his sheriff wrote letters of support. Called Carroll County, Sam Barr, his sheriff. So we had sent all that as a package, and they end up as legislators, and the governor said, yes, we'll support getting you a crisis stabilization unit. And I think it does a couple of things. It shares that example that we're not just talking about our county, our city, we're talking about this region. Now, having said that, you still have challenges when you are elected. Let's say you're the sheriff. You got elected by the people there to only focus on the folks in your county. When you start talking about going across line, well, how do I take care of a citizen in Benton County when they're not in Benton County? So we, we as judges, we may see more globally than maybe some of our counterparts who's responsible for just this. I'm responsible for Washington County. But I cannot not think about some of the larger pieces that happen to impact our entire region. Uh, we, we've done lots of interviews of different department heads of people. Uh, for example, emergency management, management and services. Talk mm -hmm. about what they're doing and, and the importance of that work. Oh my gosh. Uh, and, and real proud of, again, I, I can go through all 15 of them and tell you, John Luther's again one of the bright stars on our, on our team. Uh, but again, leading our emergency services, uh, very tight relations. He's been doing it for years and has a very uh, deep relation, tight relation, not just with folks in the county, but in the state. And so he gets called on quite a bit. He sits on state uh, boards uh, that talks about the issues that impact our state when it comes to emergency services uh, and what happens in cases of emergency. Uh, we just did our declaration of emergency for the football games. Football season is about to start. and so. I have to declare an emergency just to make sure that we have all hands on deck when it comes to all those people coming into the area, that we have enough law enforcement and emergency services and people who can you know, keep an eye on if there's some uh, maybe terrorists that may be in. You know, you got to have a lot of the undercover and tactical units all prepped and ready. And so most people don't know that, and that's fine, but that's some of the work that goes on being the county judge. But he, he drives a lot of that. He, he, he instigates and pulls together the players that need to be put together. So when we get ready for bikes, blues, and barbecue, we're ready. And, and we, we work through those. If there's a hazardous material waste, uh, if there's a terrorist attack, if there's a, a act of shooting piece, <laughs> That's that's their level of engagement. So it's always being trained, always getting prepped, always being ready, and then working with those smaller towns that don't have as real robust of uh, uh, budgets and or trainer uh, train of volunteers. That's where they get a chance to work with John Luther and his team uh, to help them get prepped and ready for any any type of events like that. Good, thanks. Uh, what else can you think of? I've asked you a lot of different questions. Sure, sure. Covered a lot of topics. What are some things maybe that are on your mind or you can think of that I haven't asked about? So it's a, one of them, and you, um, when I came in office, I had through a, a vision that, uh, well, one, my mission initially was that I want to make sure that we have good leaders 
in all our, our in a, across the county. And if you got good leaders, they can make good decisions to better serve the citizens of the county. And that's what I really wanted to do: focus on having good leaders to provide good services to the citizens of the county. My vision was that across the state, people would say, "Man, if I can mimic a county, I want to mimic." Washington County. If I can mimic a leader, if I needed to open up an animal shelter, I want it to look like the Washington County Animal Shelter. I want the leader to mimic and, and exude the things that Angela Ledgerwood exhibits. Uh, or the county attorney. I want it to look like and act like, say, a Brian Lester. So that has become the vision that I have that around the state, we would be the one that people would point to and saying, I want a court, court that's like that. I want a, a animal shelter or whatever. That the leadership that they present and the services that they provide, that is the hallmark. And I think we've started to do that. When I look at Jenny Mack, who's uh, spent 30 plus years in our juvenile detention services and, and around the state, she has helped create and build what we have today in the state when it comes to juvenile detention centers. Uh, in fact, she gets called to go to other states to help them in some of those areas. Same thing with uh, John Luther. Houston got hit with some of the crises in Florida. They're calling on him and our, our, our team. So the vision has come to fruition in many of our areas with our leaders. Uh, I think if you go outside of the judges area, people think very highly of what Sheriff Held has done and the institution that he's built. And so other sheriffs are trying to benchmark and be like Sheriff Helder, and so that just speaks well to, uh, I think, the vision that I had when I came on board and where it's come. I will tell you, lastly, uh, uh, we had a, a survey done, U uh, University of Conway, uh, University of Conway, UCA, Central Arkansas in Conway, Acres, Arkansas Center for Research and Economics, uh, did a survey. They wanted to do analysis on counties and, and their transparency when it comes to fiscal issues, and administrative issues, how do the citizens in those counties interface and have access? Can they see budgets? Can they get access to meetings? Can they see notes? They did it on all 75 counties and ranked them, and Washington County was number one in all three buckets. Number one when it came to transparency and fiscal matters, administrative and political, and, way to, and how they work with citizens in their county. They can go online and pull a budget from years gone by, artists, they can go and see minutes, they can go and look at old minutes. Uh, nobody else even came close as far as being, I mean, we're number one in all, all three categories. Um, some of the other counties may have been number two, but then they were number four in another category, and then number three and something else. So again, without the hardcore focus, just all the leaders saying, Yes, we want to be better, and we can only be better if we examine ourselves, get the leadership, get the training, and then give that away to the citizens of the county. Well, when you first took office, what were your biggest challenges coming in? Helping people see the vision, helping people get on board with where I was trying to head and what I was trying to do. Uh, a lot of trust that has to be established. I know where I want to go, and I wanted to run 100 miles per hour, but everybody's not where you are, so you got to help them see what you see. It let them buy in, help them buy into this is your department. Do people believe that you're running the best department or the best organization? If they're not, what do you need from me to do to give you the tools and resources? I always, here's what my expectations are. Here's the tools and resources for you to live up to those expectations, and then you got my help. Whatever you needing some help on. But now, if you're a challenge man, you don't know what my expectations are, how can I hold you accountable to that? If I ask for expectations but don't give you the tools and resources to do those jobs, then how can I? So again, what's the expectations that I have? Well, here's the tools and resources for you to make that happen and then know that you have my support. And that's what we've operated and worked on the whole time we've been in office. Have things that you learned maybe at Walmart or with the Secretary of State's office, have, they, have those helped you in this position? Oh, yeah, even and before tell me, I got tell here. me how they have. Uh, Walmart is all about the people, and that's what is always said. I mean, it's a people business. You got you know, almost 4,000 stores, over 2 million people. So it's very people centered, even though you got a lot of mechanisms to work it. And so making sure that we focus on the, the people, the citizens, the ones who put us here, we work for them. Corn Court employees and elected officials, we're here at the behest of the people who put us here. So how are we listening to them and engaging them and taking care of them? Uh, we, people don't need to see, are they three different groups? I need to support the, the quorum court, but not the elected official. Or I need to elected officials and not the employees. No, all three of us 
are here because of the citizens. So Walmart really is a, has been a big place to say, how do we make sure that we understand that our people make the difference? And they do. And the citizens, in our case, when we talk about public service, is what that's all about. Uh, Secretary of State's office, again, the same thing I, I gave you an example about education. The reason why we're here is to serve the people who put us here. And how do we make sure they have access? If they can't get to Little Rock, one of the things we did was start putting things on DVD and videos and get it out to the schools so they can still see, see the exhibits and have access to the things even if they couldn't get down to Little Rock. So that's some of the things I've been able to take away from, uh, say, a Walmart or, or um, uh, the Secretary of State's office. Okay. Um, before I move on to some of the final questions, sure, sure. Um, what, do you have anything else you want to talk about or any other thoughts? I, uh, no. I, again, we got a good leadership team. I, I, again, I think the, the county's in the best shape it's been in in, in, in some time. And, uh, I really stand on the shoulders of those who come before me, and again, hopefully, as as the baton continues to be passed as years go by, that people will say the same thing that, uh, uh, wow, I got the county in better shape than and and it's ever been, and so this is going to be an easy worker, easy work now that I'm in because of what has been transformed and laid out, uh, the plans, the, uh, the 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 types of leaders that we have in place, etc. So. Uh, the last couple of questions are kind of fun ones, I think. Uh, so, if someone came to you, someone had never been to Arkansas before, or Washington County, uh, kind of like when you were recruiting, maybe somebody sure. from Chicago, and they said, uh, Judge Wood, tell me about Washington County. What's it like, and uh, what would you tell them? Wow. It is an uh, incredibly um, uh, diverse incredibly uh, different from place to place and if you want your uh, college experience come to Fayetteville you can hang out with the Greek life and 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 have your beverage of choice on Dixon Street and, uh, and watch a game on the weekend if you are really interested in country life uh, and, and, and quiet and serenity I would say this rolling out to Cane Hill or, or Cincinnati in summers and you can have the quiet life and, and be away from the hubbub of everything. Uh, but if you want to go ahead and, and, and get a little bit of the taste of something, you can fly back in and run to Springdale. And uh, if you want corporate life, you got, again, you, you're not going to find anything bigger than a J.B. Hunt and a, and a Tyson and a Simmons and some of the com uh, companies that drive a lot of the, the businesses around here. And again, if you're big in the education world, you got your, your community colleges and you got your uh, specialty colleges, you got the University of Arkansas, your flagship univer uh, 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 university in the state of Arkansas. So that's what I would share with them. Tell me what it, tell me what your flavor and I will get you where you need to be. Uh, east coast of, uh, east coast, east side of the county with Elkins and Durham and the Bluebirds and, and scenic routes of uh, uh, 71. If you want to, again, like I said, kind of get a little taste of the city so you're not like you're out there and you got your Springdale and Fayetteville and, and, and growing populations surrounding them. Uh, and finally, uh, my favorite thing about Washington County is. Oh gosh. I think all of the variety. Uh, again, you, you're, you're close enough to everything and yet you can get far away if you want to uh i think my favorite favorite has to be the people i i then um I, you talked about my wife june one of the first things she did when we got down here she was surprised at how how people were hey how you doing and and, and truly was interested in how you doing and again when you're from cities big cities oftentimes you kind of get the head nod or you barely get even a eye glance and here it was this this genuine uh Hey, how you doing? How, hey, is that your kid? Just a, the, uh, which which makes for yes, we still have some of that in this country and in, in this county. And this county is exemplary of that. So um, it's the place that all the other counties want to be. That's what I keep saying. 